Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I want to share uh, the maps that I've been making of our high school football stadium. This progress has been going on for almost a year, and you can see here, here's the pre-construction, and about once a month I've been going out and using a basic app called Maps Made Easy that will allow me to fly over the location with waypoints and shoot photos with the camera. Now I'm shooting this with the Inspire 1 or the Phantom 4 and what I want to do in this video is share a little bit about the process. Not so much of stitching because I've shown Photoscan, Pix4D and even Open Drone Map on the channel. I want to demonstrate what you do with the output. Uh, the tip that you get that you can tile into images and then overlay onto a Google Map. And you may be saying to yourself, Dennis, this is crazy because I can take my imagery, upload it to a cloud service, and it will do the stitching and make my map readily available. For those of you that have followed me know that I like to get under the hood and understand how certain things work. So that's what I want to demonstrate. Now we're looking at a screenshot of my iPad. This is Maps Made Easy. You basically set your boundary points. It will take care of your image overlap and your waypoints, which is really great. It keeps things simple. Uh, it's quick to set up a mission, and this is the same one I've been flying for the past year. It yields about 95 photos. Those images are then brought into PhotoScan, and you can see sort of the path here that's very similar to what we just saw with the Maps Made Easy app. And you can see our sparse point cloud, and from that we can basically build uh, the ortho mosaic set our parameters and then export which will create a nice geotiff for us. When that export is done you can see here that I have my geotiff little over 500 megabytes and you can see here it is in very high resolution looks great and this isn't a large area you can imagine as you cover more and more acreage how this file size can really grow so we have the geotiff you could then bring it into a GIS program, let's say like QGIS. I'll turn on that layer here. You can see that everything is nicely geo-referenced and shows up just in the right location. But ultimately, depending on what you're doing, if you want to share these maps, zoom in, pan around, you want to get that into a Google Map format. To bring our big GeoTIFF into a tiled format, we'll use a library called the GDAL tools. Now these are pretty amazing open source uh, geospatial data abstraction library and you can see all the different raster formats, 142 types, vector formats and of specific interest to us in this video since we have our GeoTIFF we want to use a Python script called GDAL to tiles. It supports a lot of different parameters uh, right now we currently have the format and the projection that we need so all we need to do is use the script with our file and specify the zoom levels so let's take a look at how to do that I'm currently at the command line in the directory where the geotiff is now I do have the GDAL tools installed I won't cover that in this video there's a page that explains how to do that it's relatively straightforward but what I want to demonstrate first before we do the tiling is a command called GDAL info and we're just going to pass it uh, our GeoTIFF file and you can see that it gives all sorts of uh, geo referencing information the coordinate system the upper left bottom right coordinates the center the different bands inside of this GeoTIFF so really powerful tool for you to uh, look at some of the metadata Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'll clear the screen and I'm going to run the GDAL to tiles command. We're going to pass it a zoom. And for my maps, I've been zooming between 15 and 22. And then what we'll ultimately do is just give it the uh, GeoTIFF name. I'm actually going to put a time command in front of that just so we can see how long this is going to take. And I'll hit enter. And what you'll see is it's generating the base tiles it'll show you a progress once it gets to hundred percent we'll have our tiles as well as a few sample maps to take a look at our tiling is complete it took a little over two minutes now what happens here is that you can see that it'll create a subfolder in here in this case it's just named after our TIFF file 
and you can see that there's a 15 through 22 folders and these folders actually represent the zoom level that I specified earlier and if you go in you can see they're going to be different PNG files let's go to 22 which means we're zoomed in a lot more You can see these different subfolders and inside of them there are all sorts of tiles if we go into one of these specifically click on it you can see that that's a tree or a tile uh, zoomed in at 22 somewhere on our image. Here is what I absolutely love about GDAL to tiles. It will give you a base template, uh, Google Maps, Leaflet, and Open Layers. I know Open Layers works by default, so I will double click that. And just from that command alone, you can see that here we are with our map tile. And by default, it's set to Google Streets. We'll go to, let's say, Google Hybrid. Let me just remove that overlay and then I'll turn it back on. It's a little bit blurry and you can see that there's some transparency going on right here. As a quick demonstration, I'll just show how to remove that. So I'll go back. I'm going to open up TextMate, which is my uh, default editor that I like to use. You can see here is our folder. We'll go into the open layers file and there's a bunch of code in here with our different layers, but you can see Right here it says set opacity to 70%. Let's actually make it one. And if I go back to the map, I'll refresh. And you can see now that we'll zoom in. And there is no transparency on this layer. So it's nice and vivid, uh, just like we want. Let's take a quick look at the uh, Google Maps version of this file. So I'll just double click that. What you'll see is the map will show up quickly and then it'll give you this error and if we look at the console it took me a while to figure this out when I first got it started it'll tell you that there's an invalid key so let's go back to TextMate I'll open the Google Maps version of the file and it says right here insert your key here if you do any Google Maps work you'll know that you need a API key it's free if you have this publicly available uh, not behind a login uh, but that's a side note so I'm gonna go ahead and save this and let me just close this and refresh. Now we have a Google Maps version of this file. Now once again, there's probably, actually here it is, a variable called opacity set at 75. So I'm going to set it to one and we'll go ahead and refresh. And you can see that once again is very nice and vivid. And you can see by the nature of us using that GDAL to tiles program, it allows us to then create tiles at different zoom levels and ultimately modify our maps however we want. So this is the default Google map. And if we go back to the original version that I did, you can see that I just did this simple uh, box up here, this little widget that allows us to toggle to uh, different versions of our imagery that were taken at different dates. I just wanted to share that process with you. As you know, I'm a big fan of open source. Now I realize that PhotoScan is not open source. It's an expensive program. In my opinion, it does an amazing job. I really love it. But in an upcoming video, I'm going to cover an entire workflow that shows taking the imagery from the Phantom 4, running it through Open Drone Map, getting the stitch, and then tiling using this process. So really working towards a full open source uh, workflow for aerial mapping. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or comments or even tips, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.